You know, I spent countless years, you know, making big sewing plans for the summer, creating lists of projects I wanted to make and dreaming all year long of long days at the beach just sewing away. Except every time summer came, I never got around to it. You know, I convinced myself it just wasn't practical to bring my sewing gear with me, that it would take up too much space, too much time, that I didn't even know exactly what I wanted to do. You know, the excuses were endless but not anymore because I have found the perfect way to make sure I get my sewing fix while enjoying my downtime. I'm sharing exactly what I pack to make sure I get a little bit of sewing done while I'm away on summer holidays. I am talking all the tools we need to do it and also you know suggest a couple of fun and easy sewing projects you can easily do while you're away without a sewing machine. If you're looking forward to hand sewing a little magic during your vacation time, this video is for you and you are in for a treat. You know, for years and years growing up, the summer holidays was the time I had for sewing. I made so many cool things, but the thing I remember the most was a Christmas cross-stitch tablecloth. <laughs> I actually have it right here. This is 25 years old, probably more. And for many years, this was our family's Christmas tablecloth. You know, I think it took me two summers to complete this one. We'd spend like 15 days in August in a rented house by the beach, filled with people, all the kids slept in the same room. I don't know why I loved it so much, <laughs> but I did. And it was by far the best part of my year. And then after lunch, before we went back to the beach, I sewed. And since that time, even after we stopped going on vacation together and I grew up and started going on my own vacation, etc., I still love hand sewing during the summer holidays, after lunch, before going back to the beach. <laughs> even though I sew all year long, you know, thanks to you guys who support me on Patreon, who watch these videos, who buy stuff off Amazon using my affiliate links, and who buy my handmade items at the Sandy and Etsy shop. You know, I get to do it all year long, all times of the day and I love it. <laughs> so thank you for that, for allowing me to do what I love every single day. I am very grateful for each and every one of you. And you know what, now that I think of it, I guess that's my first suggestion for you guys. You can start your Christmas sewing projects during your summer holidays. Trust me, as someone who's made tons of sewing projects for Christmas, it is not too early at all. And there are a lot of cute things you can make as Christmas kits, you know, in no time really, like mug rugs, cup cozies, drawstring bags for cookies or anything like that, all sorts of things. And I have video tutorials for all of those, by the way. <laughs> I use the sewing machine for them, but you can easily sew them by hand, right? Let me see what else. Uh, you can make things to actually use while on vacation, you know, like games to play with your family, like on holidays, you know, tic-tac-toe or a beach bag, like the XL one I made a couple of weeks ago for you guys, a pouch for your phone or your card deck or some coins to take to the beach with you to buy something while you're there. Here in Portugal, that's actually really handy because here people sell pastry on the beach, sometimes ice creams, but mostly abolished Berlin. Berliners, I think you call them. They like these greasy donuts without a hole, filled to the brim with egg custard. Ever try that one? They taste like a million times better at the beach, let me tell you. <laughs> Another thing that's really easy to make are those fabric makeup brush holders or toiletry bags. <sighs> I have made dozens of those over the years, to be honest. Or like those foldable shopping bags that are always useful, particularly while you're away. And you know what? A foldable shopping bag was actually one of my first projects for this channel, if I'm not mistaken. So there you go, another video you can check out while on vacation. My point is, there's just so much you can hand sew while on vacation, you know, for a fun time. And then, of course, there's my favorite projects of late which are the English paper piecing projects. As you know, I am making a La Pasacalia quilt and I have tons of rosettas to make. See, this is all I have in store for this year's summer. You know, all sorts of pieces in all sorts of different states of completion. <laughs> But you know what? Before I did this, I used to make hexies a lot while I was away. My shoebox, right here. <laughs> I actually put it in a shoebox. It doesn't need to be such a big uh, box, but this is the one I had at the time, so it's been with me for 
five years at least. <laughs> I've made blankets, quilts, mug rugs, table runners, whatever I felt like. Uh, and this is actually what was left from my last summer. <laughs> Still a working project, but you know, I've had some fun with it. I intend to keep going. Uh, and this is some scraps of fabric I have left over from a project that I will be using for hexies. Another scraps. These are all the hexies. Oh, this is really old English paper pieces. Ah, oh, this, I have no idea what this is. This is Lego. Oh, this is for my bonsai. What's it doing here? Okay, this is confusing. But anyway, let's put this aside. <laughs> These are the hexes I already have made, ready to be joined together. And yeah, this is my last year's project. You know, I would say English paper piecing along with cross stitching are probably my favorite summer projects because they don't require a lot of stuff. For cross stitching, you need fabric, thread, a needle, and a scissor, and you're done. For paper piecing, well, let me see what I have here, you know. Scraps of fabric, as I've mentioned, uh, you know, small paper templates, a uh, temporary glue pen, a needle, which I think is somewhere around here, shouldn't be, but it is, a needle, uh, some thread, a scissor, which isn't here at the time, I don't, ah, here it is, tiny little scissor, and you're good to go. And this one isn't even rusted yet. <laughs> I rust my scissors at the beach a lot, a lot, a lot. But this one is okay. Because here's the thing, for anything else, you would need tons of fabric and a ruler and an iron and all sorts of things that just take up so much space. You know, unless you have all your projects like planned and the fabric pre-cut before you travel, in which case you're probably good. Well, actually not really, because if you're making a quilt or something like that, it will grow larger and larger as you go on. So not the most practical sort of project to do on the beach, right? So yeah. You can join us on our La Pasa Calle journey during the summer holidays. You can get all the templates in the links I'm listing below. You can watch the videos to know the Rosetta sequence on the La Pasa Calle playlist. And just dive in, no pun intended. <laughs> it's something you can do at the beach or by the pool or while you're camping because it just doesn't take up too much space. And that's just something to be said about mindless sewing. You know, the kind of repetitive projects you can make without having to think a lot about them. They allow you to be in the moment and to relax and to shut down your brain in a way few things can really. It really is the perfect solution for people who want to slow down but can't really deal with just staying still, you know, with not having anything to do. If that's you, a mindless sewing is a thing for you. Well, you know, I call it mindless, but it's actually mindful. <laughs> As for the cross teaching, you will need a little bit more thinking and counting, I guess, but it's still very fun, very relaxing, and you can make it in no time. And, you know, for cross teaching patterns, you probably find like dozens of sites with, you know, available free projects you can try. But how about you? What do you do when you're on holidays? What's your favorite crafts to make while you're traveling? Any favorite project you've made during the summer you can think of? Speaking of which, here's another great sewing idea for you. You can finish your whips. <laughs> and that means your work in progress projects. You know, if you're anything like me, you probably have a few of those stashed somewhere. Now for me, they're not really projects I can take on vacation with me because they are mostly quilt tops waiting to meet their batting and bottom. But if you have something a little bit smaller and easier to take with you, you will love being able to finish them. And you know, the feeling of accomplishment it brings. Like a piece of clothing you started to make but never really finished, or that bag you worked so hard on at some point but never got to see the light of day. Whatever it is, if you can finish it by hand, just do it. And you know what, best of all, sewing while on vacation has that added bonus of each time you look at that thing you've made, you will think of your vacation and all those lovely memories. You know, I particularly love that. I do that a lot, actually. Now, let's talk about the kit that's always with me when I travel. And I guess the only thing to consider is if you're traveling by plane and if you're taking just a carry-on with you, in which case all scissors and seam rippers stay home if you don't want to lose them. But you know what? You can get a scissor anywhere. And if you're not cutting fabric, like you're not doing precision fabric cutting, you don't need a particularly good scissor, really. So what I do is I get a box, 
or you know one of those bags with the ziplock that's what i usually do when i'm traveling by airplane something that won't open very easily so you'll need a measuring tape and you have those tiny retractable ones those are even better but i don't have them at the time so measuring tape two hand sewing needles on a needle holder i have a couple of those i need to get rid of these threads <laughs> and some thread a sim ripper of course and a larger scissor as well as a smaller scissor and we won't be taking our rotary cutter with us because we would need a mat for that and that's just not practical <laughs> you know this small scissor I have one of these I think it's meant to be for your nails but you know I use it for sewing you can get one of those really cute stork ones <laughs> anyway this is the one I use and if you're not really sure what you'll feel like doing which I think is the biggest problem we usually have you know just pick one or two fabrics like this one, you, you'll need a decent amount of it, you know, you don't want to decide you want to do something a little bit bigger and realize you don't have enough fabric. So we just fold the fabric nicely. You can also roll the fabric actually, do it like this, it kind of depends on the box you have. If you have a flat box, you'll want to fold it. If it's a smaller, uh, taller box, you can just roll the fabric just like so. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll probably need like half a dozen pins that you can put away with your needles on your needle holder. Because sometimes, you know, some sorts of projects do require pins or at least make your life much easier with pins. So let's just go ahead and take these with us. And this is what you need for, you know, what I would like to call general sewing. <laughs> if it's paper piecing in any way, like the English paper piecing with the La Pasacalla or the Hexies, I've shown you what you need. Paper templates, glue pen, small squares of fabric that are big enough for your templates. And you can actually just go ahead and use your scrap pile to cut the squares from, right? It's even better because you're using that precious fabric. If you're doing cross stitching, I don't have any cross stitching right now. I haven't done it in a few years, but I kind of miss it. I think I'll start. You will need a printed template. First and foremost, enough fabric for it, the required threads, one or two cross stitch needles, and a small scissor, and you're good to go. And of course, you know, as an extra bonus, the contact and location of the nearest supply shop, just in case. <laughs> but most importantly, make sure to enjoy it. You know, have fun. This is your time to rest and do what you love most. And if you're anything like me, sewing a little bit of magic, having a little fun while being creative, is right on top of that list. Have a great summer holiday, guys. Enjoy your downtime, and if you're actually looking for something, you know, fun to watch, take a look at all the So Easy by Sandy playlists for some fun videos to watch, you know, or if you just want to sew something but don't quite know what to do, there are a lot of ideas there. And I guess, you know, if you also love watercolors, <laughs> stop by the Sandy Own Crafts channel for some painting inspiration. And I will see you really, really soon. Bye-bye.